Hey, what's going on, guys? Welcome back to uh, my channel here. And uh, in this video, I'm going to talk about this post that I did um, on July 1st. And it's for the Mars Aqua 300 watt LED. And uh, this is actually a budget uh, lighting. So if you're in the reefing hobby and you find that the uh, lights like the Ecotex or the um, Kessels or some of the other big brand, uh, you know, if you feel like they're expensive, this could be a nice alternative. Uh, but I'm actually not going to be talking about the stock or factory setup of the Mars Aqua. I want to focus on this modified version because this modified version includes some of the light spectrum that is needed for coral growth. So if you, um, I mean, you can also read the, uh, the uh, whole post here and I'm going to put that link uh, in the description below. But basically what I did here was I purchased the Mars Aqua um, and I bought a pair of them for my 40 breeder. And uh, what I wanted to do was to test them out and I wanted to test them out with the, uh, you know, with a specific spectrum. And so, uh, based on this lighting here, if you look at kind of like the bluer spectrum, you'll notice that the Mars Aqua provides the about 450 nanometer and the 460 nanometer range in terms of the uh, uh, bluer spectrum lighting. What I did here was I've actually modified it to include the UV light uh, and then also a, another lower. Uh, UV light spectrum. So uh, I go through here and talk about you know replacing my uh, Ecotech XR30 Pro Gen 4 lighting with this two Mars Aqua. Uh, I had three Ecotechs on my breeder tank, my 40 gallon breeder, and it was a bit overkill but it gave good coverage. So that's why I went with that route. And then the other thing was I wanted to make sure that when I brought the corals in from the QT tank to the tank inside the house that uh, they were getting the same lighting. However, um, it was pretty expensive to have four, uh, three Ecotechs on that QT tank, so I was gonna go with the Mars Aqua instead for the cheaper uh, option since it was gonna be housed in the garage anyways. So uh, here are the two lights. Uh, if you were to look at the uh, stock light, uh, this is kind of small here, but if you uh, if you're gonna look at the LED setup for the stock light, you'll see where the colors are at in terms of you know your yellows, your whites for this uh, white channel, and then the blue channel you have your 450 nanometer to the 460 nanometer. So you can see here how they are positioned in the lighting, and I um, try to make sure these are accurate. But again, if they're not accurate, I do apologize. But I did some research and found that this is what uh, the LED in that position would be if you were to look at this graph here. So you have your 460s in these two position versus, you know, your white and your 460 here, your white here again, your yellow, your reds. So turn yours on if you had bought one and just look to see if the colors correspond to what you have on your LED. So the whole goal is to transition them over to this setup here. And this setup here actually includes, if you look at this, the 395 nanometer range, 425. Um, <clears throat> and then, uh, of course, you have still your 450 and your 460. And these are for the blue channel. So I've also changed the white channel in themselves. See, this used to be yellow and white. And I want to say yellow was like in the 3K, 3000 Kelvin range, maybe 3500 Kelvin range. The white, I think, was at around like 7000 Kelvin range. But I made the switch over to the 25,000, so it's not 25K, but 25,000 Kelvin range. So I have a mixture of 25,000 to the 10K, uh, 10,000 Kelvin range. Uh, and I made that uh, switch on this white channel. And then also the white channel will have uh, some 460 nanometer range. And let me see what else I threw in here. Um, thought I had some 395, but I think 395 is just on the blue channel. So primarily the um, the warmer whites were replaced with the more cooler whites. So that normally would shift the Kelvin range up into the cooler range, like maybe around 15K to 20K range. Um, but again, the whole goal was to give better growth in coral. Um, and based on some of the research that I saw, 
the 395 to the um, 425 nanometer range were, uh, were needed along with the 450 and the 460. So that's why they were included. Um, and then what I did was I ordered a whole bunch of LEDs, the 3 watt one uh, online, and then I desoldered the LEDs. Uh, I went through and basically went through each LED and desoldered the one that wasn't needed and then soldered in the one uh, that was going to replace them. So um, I went through that and I did it for both lights, but uh, I, first off I did it for just one light and then left one factory so that I can do a comparison for this article post here. So if we look at this, I actually had the um, the Senai Reef Monitor System, which has the built-in PAR and Lux meter. And so I did a bit of measuring um, just so that I have kind of like a baseline. But uh, this here, if we look at this chart, this is just for the reds. So, you know, I put that part meter right up on the red just to see what it would give me. Same with this one here. I put it right up to the part just for that green LED. And, um, and then this one here is for the warm whites. But that was just a test. Um, <clears throat> but basically, I had two of the lights side by side. So I have the two lights side by side. Uh, the rear one is the is the uh, modified. The front one is the uh, stock factory one. Um, and then I just went through and turned on the lights one by one. And so, like this one here is the factory with the white channel. This is the factory with the uh, blue channel, and this is the factory with both channels. All right, and then I went through here and showed you how the lights looked. Um, I took off this little lens here, and that exposed just the LED. And then I went ahead to de and de desolder the LEDs. Um, and I didn't really I had the desoldering machine, but I didn't really use that because uh, it was actually easier to just desolder one pin, put in one of those um, you know small little uh, flat here on one end, and just pry it up, and then you know heat it up the other end and then pry that off and that was just much faster uh, but then again you know I go through here talking about different nano spectrum range options available but these were the ones that I actually purchased okay uh, and if you go back here if you look at the chart again it'll tell you how many I purchased or how many was needed and this was uh, you know all the LEDs that were needed to make the swap over so I go through here and talk about the light spectrum, uh, you know, showed you the lights, uh, showed you the uh, soldering station here, discuss a bit about, uh, you know, the LEDs that I purchased here. And then this is actually the modified one here. So this is the first light, the factory, second light, which is the modified one here. And this modifier, this is actually the blue channel. And you can tell these middle ones here are in a different 395 nanometer range here. Uh, this is the blue channel. This is the uh, white channel. And then this is both combined, and they almost look like the Orphic lighting. So it's got a combination of those lights, which is needed for the core growth. Uh, again, this is both lights on. This one here uh, is the blue channel on at max. Uh, and this is the modified one versus the uh, stock one here, or the factory one here. Uh, let's take a look at this again. Uh, this is modified. This is the factory one, and the factory one looks more natural. Uh, looks more of like a daylight, daylight lighting, so not much blue in here. Uh, but for coral gro growth, it's probably better with the uh, more of the blues. So um, this one is a modified one, and I suspect maybe in the 16, 18,000 Kelvin range, of course. The PAR meter doesn't really read well in this lighting spectrum, so I couldn't get a true spectrum of, you know, what is this at. So I'm going to assume it's about 16 to 18, could be 14. Uh, but this one here definitely looks more like between 7 to 10K. It's very white. Um, and then this is a top-down view of the two lights here, the modified versus the factory. And here it is another one here. So you can tell that this one here, although you can you have to look closely. This one looks more very blue and very purplish look versus this one here looks more white purplish. This is the factory lighting. So this one here probably looks much better 
than this one here. Uh, but you know, again, this one I I put in the LEDs that would give me the light spectrum that I was looking for. Um, so I did do some readings here, and I don't know if I have. Let me see here. So this is the par reading. I went through and did some par reading on the lighting, and I did it from a depth of 14 inches versus 22 inch. I did it on blue channel uh, at low setting versus you know uh, high channel. Uh, or did both blue channel one at high one at low uh, you know based on the knobs you could turn it on it's at low and then turn it all the way up and so if you take take a look at this uh, just for example high blue channel you're getting about 643 par um, at 14 inch and then about 451 at 22 inch and of course this is without water so that may change but uh, this would just give you kind of you know the idea of the par meter uh, a par reading so the modified LED we got a little bit less at 608 you know for a 14 inch and then 410 at 22 inch and that is because I had to replace some of the 460 and 450 with the um, 410 and the 4 or, and the 395 nanometer range so those actually I put a bit less even though they're 3 watts um, and so the the part meter is just a bit lower. Um, if we take a look at the white light, right? So this is the just the white channel. Um, at 14 inch, the factory put out 477. 22 inch, you get about 338. And then for the modified one, it's actually pretty close at 475 for the 14 inch, and 323 at the 22 inch. Uh, and if you look at both channels combined on high, you'll see that the numbers are pretty high here. So we're getting factory at 1,111 at 14 inch and then uh, 788 at 22 inch. And then for the modified one, uh, because of the spectrum shift, we're getting about 1,082 at 14 inch and 22 at 732. So. I'm going to say this is pretty strong for core growth, for SPS core growth. Um, you can't go wrong with these lightings. It'll probably get the job done. Uh, but of course, we're probably not going to have white channel at max. And typically, you know, you'll probably be able to get the blue channel all the way up there. Then the white channel is probably going to be half of that. So you might be looking around 400 to 500 par, uh, which is still doable for SPS growth. So uh, if you want to take a look at the charts themselves, you can actually click on it. Uh, and I didn't really label them, but if you click on these, um, like this graph here, and it's not going to show you here, but if you look at the URL, it'll tell you if it's you know stock at 22 inch low white or or stock you know 14 inch low white channel, and then you'll have an idea of these readings and what they correlate to. All right, but that is pretty much it. Um, I'm just going through this in a nutshell. If you want to read more on this article that I created, uh, feel free to click on the description below. And if you're looking to do the same thing to your light setup, um, I have listed you know all the LEDs and where I got them from. So feel free to just check out the links and hopefully I can help you out. If you have any questions, feel free to also leave it down here in the comment section. Um, either on the website or my YouTube channel, and I'll be more than happy to help you out as much as I can. Again, I just want to thank you for uh, stopping by. Uh, if you feel like this video has helped you out, feel free to like the video and share and subscribe if you can. Again, thanks for watching, and uh, until next time, I'll see you again.